Happy November 19th. It is International Men's Day. You may not know because society in general wants to basically make this day non existent, never acknowledges it, because all the problems that men face in the world, which is far more than women, uh, they don't care about it. And actually, that's bringing up this topic is the fact that nobody cares because it needs to be talked about. You know, I was on the bus yesterday and I heard like a little ad thing, right? And I was so sickened by it. Now, I always knew that women's health, women's everything, gets more attention, right? That's, that's not a surprise. But then when I heard it in the ad, I was like, oh, I'm so fucking tired of this. Basically, there's a store called Shoppers Drug Mart. You may not have it in your country, but it's basically a glorified convenience store. The, the commercial was talking about donating money for women's shelters and just towards women's mental health in general. Despite the fact that men have far more mental health issues than women do, despite the fact that women have more shelters than men, but they want to help women with those things. And then for the ad to be on, like, men's month, like, International Men's Day is the 19th of November, but November as a whole is considered, like, mental health men's month. Again, people don't even know that it exists, but it is a thing. The reason for it is because it's the same month as International Men's Day, and some sane people like to consider the actual mental health crisis going on. And the fact that Shoppers Drug Mart made it about women on the fucking month of, no of November is uh, disgusting. So fuck you, Shoppers Drug Mart. Regardless, I'm gonna remake a rant that I made back in 2013 on suicide because I want to update a lot of what I said. This video here, Truth About Feminism and Male Oppression, I go through pretty much every aspect of male oppression in that video, including the suicide stats, but it does de um, deserve its own video, and it deserves its own video because it's a very serious topic, and it's probably one of the most serious topics, and one of the most ignored topics. 75%, one, a 3 out of 4, of all suicides are men. But nobody cares about that. The reason why those suicide rates are so high and will continue to increase is because nobody cares. Nobody acknowledges it. Everybody has the mentality of, you're a man, fix your own problems, and fix everyone else's too. Men also have the highest stat for depression and anxiety, which leads to higher suicide. I made a video a long time ago, and it's called Depression Guilting. I suggest you watch this video. Basically, in this video I explain that when somebody is having suicidal thoughts or is just depressed in general, the worst advice you can give these people is don't commit suicide because, you know, there's people who would miss you or rely on you or whatever. And then even worse is when you're depressed and they say, well, there's other people who have it worse off than you. These people have no concept or understanding of what depression is. And uh, all I can, because I, I said it in this video, but I'll give you a quick summary, is basically that when you say those things, all you're doing is actually guilting depression and suicidal thought victims. You're making them feel worse. You're guilting them. And you're basically undermining the struggles that they're going through. Everybody who is depressed is aware that there's other people who have it worse than them. But that, but that is not a reason to continue living. Guilting them and making them feel bad about themselves and basically being like, you can't feel depressed. It's just making them feel so much worse, especially because un unless it's circumstantial depression, it's uncontrollable. But yeah, watch this video for a full explanation on that. I, I hate depression guilting, and I hate suicide guilting, and what I hate more than anything is like suicide blaming. Like if a man does attempt suicide but fails, like he continues living, like the suicide attempt doesn't work, he's then guilted for that. 
Well, why would you do that? How selfish of you to even try to do that. You have friends and family here. What's wrong with you? Okay. So what you're saying is you want him to try it again? Thing is, though, if it was a woman who did that, everybody would be hugging her saying, Oh, I can't believe you did it, but, but I'm so glad you survived. Please don't ever do that again. And if you ever feel that low again, please come talk to me. But if a man does it, we just get angry at him, right? We live in a world where us men are disposable. We are disposable. We are disposable. We are replaceable. No one cares. No one fucking cares about men and what men go through, despite the fact that we go through more than women. There are a lot of things in our modern society especially that contribute to the extreme rise in men's depression and anxiety, which in turn leads to suicide. All the things that I mention in my male oppression video, those are the things. Men are tired of doing the right thing and being told they're doing the wrong thing. Men are tired of helping out other people but never receiving help. Men are tired of going through such severe problems, but yet all we ever hear when we watch things online, when you watch a show, when you watch a movie, when you read an article, when you watch the news, when you look at social justice groups protesting or whatever. They are sick and tired of hearing women this, women that, women this, women that, women this, women that. Because men face more problems. In fact, most men don't even mind that everything is about women. What they mind is that nothing is about men. That's what they mind. Even if you're going to talk about problems that women don't even have, the least you could do is talk about the problems that men do have. But no, not, not even that. It's, it's, it's the non-existent female problems, but nothing else is the society we actually live in. You got men who struggle so much in the, in the dating world because, because men are expected to be mind readers. Men are expected to pay for everything despite the fact that we're, be, that we're being pushed out of the workforce. Then you got problems in like marriages when it comes to children. Like men have no leniency in divorce court or child custody, but women do. Men can literally be the better parent and still lose their kid to the abusive mom. He can literally have less money but is still forced to pay alimony and yet the horrible ex, wife or whatever, will take his money and use it on herself. Then you got the workplace deaths that men face and just so many problems that men face that women do not but yet, through it all, through the smokescreen, women are told you're the victim. And you should be happy about it, because since you're the victim, you can get whatever you want. Oh, that homeless guy over there crying? Well, he's a man. Fuck him. That is the society we live in. And it's these things and more that contribute to men's anxiety, depression, and suicide. But are we ever going to change it? No. Because our modern SJW world will continue pushing... Women victim, women victim, women victim, women victim, male privilege, male privilege. Yeah. So, male privilege is the fact that 67% of all homeless people are men. Male privilege is the fact that 75% of suicides are men. Male privilege is the fact that we make up the majority on anxiety and depression. Male privilege is the fact that men make up now the majority of unemployment. Male privilege is not having any men's shelters if we become homeless. Women have shelters. Men wind up in the backseat of their car or on the street. Male privilege is the fact that we are at an all-time high of male students dropping out of school because they're so depressed when they go to school and are not only put down by the system, by parents, by teachers, by society in general, by the news, by social justice groups, but they're even put down by the actual lessons in school because they're sitting there listening about women's suffrage and women oppression and the men are just told, yeah, you're, you're, you're a man, you don't have any problems, which makes them even more depressed. That's 
male privilege to you? Is that what male privilege is? Wow. Then I wish I was fucking oppressed if that's privilege. I wish I was oppressed like women. Cause, because if I was oppressed like a female, then I can get whatever I want. I could punch a man without him punching me back. I can get everything that I want paid for me and have a man do all the paying because I'm the oppressed one. These are the issues that have to be resolved if we want any hope whatsoever of decreasing male depression, anxiety, and suicide. But I want to talk now directly to people who are suicidal. And again, since women do make up one in four, you matter too. All people who are depressed and have suicidal thoughts matter. It's just that men have a lot more of them. But I want to talk to everybody who has had suicidal thoughts. And I want you to know that you always have a reason to live. Always. Fight for what you deserve. Fight for what you want and fight for what you need. I know it can be tough, especially if you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to. And I literally know hundreds of men who will keep their emotions inside because they feel they have no one to talk to. But here's the thing. You're not entirely right about that. You believe that because of what society has implanted in your mind. But I'm here to tell you right now the honest truth. There is no shame in crying. There is no shame in expressing your emotions and how you feel. There is no shame in telling someone how you feel. If somebody is going to shame you and attack you for doing those things, tell that person to go fuck themselves and go find someone else who will care. I understand that you've been pushed down for a larger part of your life. I get it. I was one of those people. I myself have had clashes with suicide four times. Two attempts and two where I just felt it but I didn't actually try it. There is always someone that you can talk to. You don't feel like you can talk to your parents? Fine. Talk to some friends. You don't think your friends care? Fine. Talk to your partner. You don't have a partner? Fine. Then find something online. There are like free help centers. And by the way, I also understand that a lot of these help centers don't really help. They also tend to, you know, either just throw pills down your throat or they'll be condescending and not understand what you're going through. I get it. But they're not all like that. And another important aspect of depression and suicide is something that's not talked about very much. There's a lot of guys who feel suicidal, and this is not every single time, but it is a large amount, who feel suicidal because they feel that they have the weight of the world on their shoulders, meaning that they are at a point where they've spent their whole life living for other people, whether if it's helping other people, taking care of other people, and never focusing on themselves. Again, this is not the majority of suicidal people or depressed people, but it is a very large amount, and I want to talk to those people now. You were told your whole life growing up that your life doesn't matter, your wants don't matter, your needs don't matter. In fact, one of the biggest things that men are told growing up is that he needs to dedicate his entire life to making himself into a great man so that he can take care of a woman when he's older. Not take care of himself, but grow enough to take care of a woman. That's his goal. His goal is to take care of his future wife or girlfriend. Whereas a woman's future goal is to take care of herself and only herself. And I'm here to tell you again the truth. And I understand you may not accept it from me just telling you, but I am telling you the truth. And even if you don't believe it from hearing me say it, at least put it in the back of your mind. And over time, you'll start to understand. You need to retrain your mind that you do not exist for other people. There's nothing wrong with helping other people, but that's not the reason you exist. This is you. This is your life. Your life, your desires, your career, your wants, your needs, they fucking matter. Tell yourself, they matter, I matter, I matter. 
And if you're sick of spending all your time just helping other people or growing yourself to help other people or take care of other people in the future, stop. Look in the mirror and say, I matter. Because this is me. This is me. This is my body. This is who I am. I need to take care of myself first for once. And that is not selfish. People will try to convince you that it's selfish, but I assure you it isn't. Your mental health and your life should always be put first. Always. And I spent most of my life putting other people first, and I now regret it. Because I did that, I now feel that I am not at the point in my life that I should be based on my age. Don't make the same mistake I did. Put yourself first because you matter, even though people may tell you that you don't. You do matter. Look in the mirror and repeat it to yourself if you have to. I matter. I matter. There is no shame in saying to yourself, I now choose to live for myself. That is okay. In fact, it's not just okay. It is a good thing. It is time for you to focus on yourself. Get help for your mental health to stop those suicidal thoughts. And get a whole bunch of hobbies that you enjoy. Do you enjoy playing video games? Then you fucking play them and you buy them for yourself. Do you enjoy playing sports or an instrument or whatever? Then just do it and things will come to you. Do you have a job? Good. Focus on it. Make that job a career. It doesn't matter what the job is. There's nothing... There, there, you know what? There's no... Another thing that you were probably shamed for is that you work at a grocery store or in retail. There's nothing wrong with that either. Do you work in retail? Do you like that job? Are you making money? Good. Stay there. The moral of this is to focus on yourself and learn what you like and learn what matters to you and grow. And fuck all the shit that you grew up hearing such as happy wife happy life son i don't care how happy you are as long as you grow to have a happy wife your happiness doesn't matter your happiness is based on her happiness you are allowed to be happy regardless of what society is telling you i know i'm repeating myself here but i have to to get it through to people because we have been so damaged and put down that we we don't even we don't even know anymore what we're supposed to be or what we can be. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can be whatever the fuck you want and fuck what society has told you. If you're suicidal or if you've thought about it, please do not bottle up your emotions. Don't do it. Bottling up your emotions is the worst thing that you can do. And I see a lot of guys, even in my personal life, who bottle it up. I'll literally say to those people, if, like if they're friends, for example, I'll say, hey, are you, like, I can see visibly that they're, like, sad. And I'll be like, hey, are you okay? And they'll literally be sitting there looking at their phone like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Because men have literally been taught that you are not allowed to express your feelings. And you're not allowed to ask for help. And this is another contributing factor to the high suicide rate. But you are. You are. And if you, and if you are still told by idiot fucking people that you're not allowed, fuck them. Do it anyway. Fight for what matters. Fight for what's right. Fight for your right to mental health help. Society may hate men, but we need to band together and help improve this mental health crisis that we are going through. Let people know. Scream it from the rooftops. Three out of four suicides are men, and we demand help. I don't know what else to say. The moral of this, though, of what I can say is, if you have people in your life, ask them for help. And if you don't have people in your life, then live for yourself. Do your job. Do your hobbies. Be you. Ha be happy with what you have in your life. Even if it's like video games or you have a you, you want to play sports, just do it. Don't worry about how this other random person is doing. For once in your life, live for you. That's all I can say. If you are having problems with depression, 
anxiety or suicide, message me because I'm a professional at this and I can help you. I've literally talked people out of suicide before. Reach out, not just to me, but reach out in general in your life, okay? For the record.